A lot less emotion in this episode. Not once did I feel fear for the characters. I didn't feel sad, happy. It just felt like a bit of an information dump. If a season of TV has episodes you skip over on a rewatch, this might be Shogun's. Episode 6, Ladies of the Willow World, is a more thoughtful, slow-paced episode. We get a bit more of Mariko's backstory. They try to get me to care about John and Mariko's relationship. That ship has sailed already. Last episode you told us they wouldn't speak again, except for when sharing words from others' mouths. Now you're trying to tug at my heartstrings with John and Mariko's forbidden passion? You set up Fuji last episode. You gave us the tender touching of hands. You gave us the tragic tale of a confected family legacy. We had the opportunity to reveal that Lord Torunaga was honouring her father by carrying his swords. Zilch! We get 10 minutes of woeful Japanese theatre. The Council of Regents feels like it's treading water. We almost had five. Now we've technically got three. There's a scene in a brothel that has no nudity, no sex scene, not a hint of eroticism. It felt like it was there to reinforce John's love for Mariko. The Jesuits return for a brief cameo as they consider switching sides in the War of the Five Clans. We get a lot of Lady Achiba. I feel like I must be stupid or something because there was lots of talking in previous episodes, but it was enthralling. Every line changed the dynamic, forged and broke alliances, changed people's opinions on characters' behaviour. Relationships blossomed, others withered. In this episode, it feels like the conversations are just reinforcing already held positions of the characters. I can't think of a scene from this episode that I would show someone to encourage them to watch Shogun. They're all more associated with previous revelations and continuing the chain of events rather than really turning the world upside down. Maybe you could share the tea house scene or the theatre scene as an example of beautiful costumes and attention to detail. We're dropping down to an 8 out of 10 here. I've seen reviews where they gave the entire season average scores and I'm worried that maybe this is the beginning of the downward slide. Put all your eggs into the early episodes to get people hooked, and hooked I was. But now I have to wait another week to see if my hopes have not been misplaced. If this were any other show, I would have given this an even lower score, but Shogun has the runs on the board to earn my trust. I'm hoping that I'm just stupid and the next episode will make all of my concerns seem idiotic as it will connect all the threads in a satisfactory manner. Spoiler time! Episode 6 of Shogun starts with a flashback, Mariko being introduced to Lady Achiba as a child. Mariko witnessing her father, Akechi Jensai, who is served by Torunaga and Hiramatsu, all serving the Lord Kuroda. Kuroda is arguing with Lord Akechi and is shown to be beheading what appears to be Buddhists. Lady Achiba seems to be watching Torunaga and Hiramatsu as they whisper to each other. Mariko is being married off to Bantaro, who is apparently a pleb, even though his father serves with Torunaga. These family trees are a little confusing for me. Achiba tells Mariko to look away from that we cannot control. Some pretty good de-aging in these scenes. I wonder if they could just widen the aspect ratio to give a more plump, childish facial features. Post intro, we see Torunaga clan mourning the deaths of their people. Torunaga singles Blackthorn out for saving him again and grants him a fiefdom with many generous cuckoos. He also makes him the admiral of his navy and the leader of his cannon brigade. He also gets a new set of swords to replace the ones he gifted to Torunaga after the landslide. This generosity raises a few eyebrows among Torunaga's supporters, such as Yabushigi and Omi. We get another look into the Japanese way of dealing with death. Death is basically proof that you lived. Yabushigi is going over the reports on casualties after the earthquake. Omi is complaining that the barbarian gets so many gifts lavished upon him. But Yabushigi has bigger fish to fry. Why worry about a single barbarian when Ashido's army will soon be attacking them in their weakened state? I love the look on his face when he turns to his retainer to remind him to create a new will. Yabushigi is obsessed with death. Mariko and Blackthorn are saying the Lord's Prayer. Mariko in Latin and Blackthorn in English. They're not so different. I could have done without this scene. Bantaro throws himself at the mercy of Torunaga for dishonouring his master. But Torunaga says that he's dishonoured himself and Blackthorn. Torunaga suggests he divorce Mariko. Bantaro says that Mariko drives him nuts. She won't give up the goods after all these years, but she's super friendly to Anjan. 
I don't think he knows, but I'm sure he suspects. Torunaga says he should spend seven days away from Mariko if he can't control himself around her. Blackthorn and Mariko arrive just as Torunaga dismisses Bantaro. That little twitch of the lip is brilliant. Really shows he wishes he could speak his mind, but his loyalty demands he hold his tongue. Notice that Blackthorn and Bantaro bow while Mariko stays upright. I suppose she's giving him what he merits. What happened to Mariko's son with Bantaro? They left him in Osaka when they smuggled Torunaga out of the city. Blackthorn wants to fight the Portuguese, but I guess Torunaga still considers them to be useful after they helped him escape Osaka on the black ship. I assume it has something to do with the Portuguese never having actually harmed Torunaga himself. He just got caught up in their attempts to kill Blackthorn. Torunaga asks what is going on between Mariko and Blackthorn. She insists it's nothing, so he suggests that she take Blackthorn to a brothel and interpret for him while he makes pillow. How come my boss never demands my co-worker take me to a brothel and watch while I plough some premium tail? Life's not fair. We get our first taste of OFP, or as it was called back in the day, Osaka and Fried Pigeon. Ashido is locked down the city after claiming an attack on the air. At first I thought this was the aftermath of the earthquake. I wasn't sure it was felt this far away. I'm actually a little surprised that Hiramatsu survived this long, considering he was a representative of Toronaga. He's trying to get the rest of the clan, including Torunaga's wife, Kiki, out of Osaka, but one of his mistresses, Shizu, is too pregnant to get on the horse, so he is sent off alone to warn Torunaga. He gets involved in a bit of sword play on the way out as the guards try to stop him. He even has his horse body check one of them. The Jesuits have been locked out of the city and now they are questioning if they should switch allegiance to Torunaga. So Father Martin informs us that Ochiba's father was a Busho, the same as Torunaga is now. And she also despises the church. She said to the priests when the Taiko was dying that maybe God was up their ass. So she's no friend of theirs. Torunaga is a Minawara, which is supposedly people who were of the Emperor's bloodline who got too far removed from succession so they created the clan Minawara to separate themselves and become samurai. But their noble bloodline gives them a higher prestige as they still have a rightful path to succession. Ochiba is sus of Torunaga and Mariko as it was shortly after Mariko was married off that Achiba's father was murdered. She then became consort to the Taiko and had to endure getting pounded by his wrinkly old dong as he tried to produce an heir. This next scene is one of the reasons I'm marking this episode down. I found it very boring. Important things happen in this scene, and the costume and sets and everything are beautiful. It's just a bit dark and there's a lot of terrible singing and people staring. They're watching a play about the life of the Taiko, which is pretty morbid, but like Torunaga said, death is an affirmation of life. Sugiyama is upset that the regents are being held hostage, while Kiyama seems pretty chill with the whole thing. There's a couple of words in this episode that the subtitles don't interpret. The old nun calls Ishido the Taiko's Kosho. I assume she means lapdog? This whole scene gets way too deep in the symbols and rituals of Japan for me to ever fully dissect. It feels almost as if the Taiko's wife was arranging the consorts to try to get pregnant, but then drugging them. I can't tell if it was so they'd be more compliant, more fertile, or even if she was trying to prevent them from becoming pregnant and therefore diluting her power. So it seems like they're using this actor, Lord Ito, as a pawn who will do what he's told if he's elected to the council. I don't know why him exactly. Maybe after years of performing plays revering Ashiba for giving Taiko a son, he will be on her side. It feels like Ashido and Achiba are just using each other to get what they want. I'm sure they see it and are both aware that they will be cast aside once the war is won. Ashido straight up asks Achiba why she hates Toronaga so much, and she just deflects and tells him that he will be a great man if he rids her of him. Hiramatsu arrives and collapses just outside Anjin's house. They hold a war council, and it is pushed by Hiramatsu that they need to enact Operation Crimson Sky a full-scale assault on Osaka Castle. They introduce a new potential ally, Torunaga's half-brother, Seiki Nobutatsu. They oscillate back and forth between pro-Crimson Sky and anti, but Torunaga says he never wanted to be a shogun, so come up with a plan that won't get him killed. Mariko is bartering with the brothel owner for a good price on a session with Kiku, Omi's girlfriend. Again, we get a word that is not translated, monmi, I looked it up, it's a unit of measurement used for pearls. I guess it's like carrots for diamonds. 
Is there some hidden meaning with the cups? When she starts off, she puts it down by touching one side and then lowering the other. Then later, she puts it down flatly. Meanwhile, Mariko is using both hands to place hers gently and levelly on the floor. Omi's finding out what it's like to date an OnlyFans creator. His missus has to take the BBC. Once you go barbarian, you'll never touch the sides again. This whole scene at the brothel is so obtuse. Everything is hidden behind double meaning. When they explain the meaning of the willow world, all I can think about was the wind in the willows. Mr. Toad's wild ride indeed. I feel like I'm being filtered by this part of the episode. Did sitting beside Mariko make it seem like the words were coming out of Mariko's mouth rather than being purely a translation? It's like Blackthorn and Mariko are finally getting to share that they care for each other and they wish they could be together. But then it's intercut with horrible memories of Mariko's childhood Is she using Blackthorn's throbbing member to escape from her own horrible circumstances? What is this show trying to tell me here? People are saying that they had a threesome, but Mariko clearly responds to, Will you join us? with, It must only be you. The touchy handy thing was a bit creepy too. Mariko went straight home because she's there when the ladies drop him off in the morning. Omi gets a look at her in the morning after a night of BBC. Once you go Blackthorn, you'll always come back for more. She looks like she hasn't got a good night's sleep, so she doesn't know where to look. Poor guy. Stop being a simp. Toronaga's got a message. How he could have received it when the pigeons are dead, I don't know. Maybe it was from his half-brother. Another scene where I feel too stupid to understand. Toronaga tells Mariko that her father wanted her to continue his fight. I have no idea what that even means. Does he expect her to sneak in and kill a Chiba? She did train with those pole stars before. Maybe she's going to become a ninja. The vote for Ito is going ahead and Sugiyama votes no. He doesn't think the other regents have the interest of the realm at heart. Achido takes that to heart. How dare you make such an accusation. And Sugiyama is out of there. Achiba is finally going to tell Ashido why she hates Toronaga. She saw him whispering. My god, the nerve. And she claims that while it was Mariko's dad who killed her father, it was Toronaga who planned it. What evidence does she have? None. How do I know that? Because Ashido says to make the claim publicly and will kill him now. And she doesn't want to. She's using this opportunity to get rid of the nun Deowen. She's promoting Toronaga as an ally to Achiba, and now she wants her gone, claiming she drugged her. Daewon was the Taiko's wife who gave her the mirror. He compelled fate to look at her so she could scratch out its eyes. What the hell does that even mean? All this talk of looking and looking away, it's also shrouded in mystery. Who wrote this? Is this in the novel? Sugiyama is bailing out of Osaka, but it's too late. Ashido cuts him off and cuts him up, but Sugiyama gets one last swipe in, calling Ashido a bureaucrat. The one thing he hates being called. Got him! Toronaga enacts Crimson Sky and everyone's on board. Even Yabushi is all for it. The camera focuses on Bantaro for some reason. I notice Blackthorn isn't cheering in the wide shot. Thus ends episode 6 of Shogun Ladies of the Willow World. As I said earlier, I'm giving this episode an 8 out of 10. It's still a good hour of television. It just didn't hit as hard as previous episodes. Previous episodes, I felt the full gamut of emotions. Happiness, sadness, anger, pity. This episode, I feel like the most pronounced emotion was confusion. If that's even an emotion. I feel like this episode is really focusing on the women. Mariko, Kiku, or Chiba. And because in this society they have no direct power, they have to use indirect power to influence others. But they clothe it in niceties and sweetness. Again, we missed some massive opportunities to have some interaction with Fujisama and the loss of Blackthorn's swords, and the promotion of her father's swords to the Busho's personal weapon. She did get a little scene where she was proud that her Hadomoto was now the Admiral of the Navy but I feel like we're never going to explore Blackthorn and Fuji's relationship much further. If anything, it will be Blackthorn and Mariko. It's a bit confusing that Ashido feels he can just kill guys now. Why not just kill Toronaga? 
The whole Osaka situation has gotten very muddy. Is Ito on the Council of Regents now? Do they need to hire two more people now? Achiba's motivations are very opaque to me too. It was said she was very close to marrying Toronaga, but was that an arranged marriage or did they have a relationship? And where's Mariko's son? She's not said one word about him. Very strange. A bit of a disappointing episode that I hope future episodes will prove it's worth. But otherwise, I'm looking for an improvement next week. Thanks for watching. If you like what you saw, please consider subscribing. I release reviews occasionally when time allows, and a thumbs up would be a big motivator for further reviews. If you didn't like it, feel free to leave a thumbs down and let me know how I can improve in the comments below. Anyway, I'm Mixie. Thanks for your time, and have a good one.